Hello, Flash Dagger here. This week we have the very special Gran Turismo movie time trial challenge at the Red Bull Ring in the Nissan GTR 18. It's a car I'm very familiar with, having done the entire GT World Series Manufacturers Cup in this car in the GT1 League. However, the track itself, I wouldn't say I'm particularly strong at. We are currently 36th in the world at the time of making this. Uh, we could have had a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 as an optimum time. We're going to have to settle for a 0 0.7. There's track limits everywhere. They're exceptionally strict. There's curbs that will kill you if you look at them the wrong way. <laughs> they will throw you off into the sand or into a wall. You just got to deal with the challenge, not just from a skill-based perspective, but from it will test your stress levels, believe me. Um, I know this more than others, given that I had numerous laps ruined right at the very end. For example, a 0.7 was to be had, but for the second last corner, and more annoyingly, uh, I was on a blistering lap, and I just decided to dip a wheel on the very, very last exit. Um, which would have ultimately got me a 0.6. So there's time to be had for me in this. This one's a 0.7. I hope it helps you out. If it does, let me know. I love the feedback. It really, really helps and encourages me. These do take an awful lot of time to make. We will be spending quite a lot of time on turn two. Technically, it's turn three, but breaking point two up under the hairpin because I believe that's where people are going to be challenged the most. So stick around for that. And yeah, let me know how you get on. So let's just jump straight into the guide. We're going to select uh, the time trial option from the home page, and we're going to jump in and see how we can get on. So we start the lap coming across the line up in the fifth, and we're going to get as far left as possible without a track limit. Looking at the 100, that's where we're breaking, and this one's really easy. You can see it from your, your chase, your hood, your bumper cam. We're going to break in a straight line for 50 meters. So at the 50 meter point, that's where we're beginning to turn in. That's important, the straight line breaking. So we can just see here, we're just going to drop the second for the rotation, fully off the brakes and the accelerator and coasting. Now we're just going to freeze it there. We're up to third and we're already getting the power in. But this is really important. So I've frozen it right here on the apex. And the reason I've done that is this corner, and I hate to say it given this is a track guide, is unpredictable in the outcome. And what I mean by that is, it's very much an RNG corner. Now, as we rotate around the car, what you're going to see is that hitting the right line here involves taking a piece of that yellow curbstone, which is going to unsettle the car. There's nothing you can do about it. It's going to lift the wheels up, and depending on the bounce that you get, you can either get a favorable bounce or one that isn't favorable. You can get one that bounces you out into a track limit penalty. You can get one that causes you to have side-by-side -side action on the rear. Or you can get one that you can actually launch out of that corner. Obviously, uh, you want to get the best exit possible. But it will cost you time taking the safe line. If I was in a race, I'm probably going to take less of that curb and be less aggressive. Given it's a time trial challenge, I'm taking all of that curb and just hoping I get the right bounce so I can get onto the throttle and par out of the corner. So we par out in third, but as you can see, it's not fully on the power it's 50 percent and then through to 100 percent straddling that curb that's about as much as you can take without getting a penalty and you can see we're really looking to straighten up the steering inputs and speed ourselves all the way up the straight to the next braking zone so as you can see that's a mid point three that's a solid sector one however the variance is about two tenths i've achieved mid point twos right up to mid point fours and and worse um, due to the RNG nature of that curb on turn one. What I would say is stick around after the raw footage of the full lap uh, to see some of that cruel irony in full effect. So we approach the braking zone for turn two. I know it's technically turn three, but it's the, the second braking area. And that's just right before the 100 meter board on the left-hand side. Now, I'm going to spend a little more time on this particular corner over others because it is the one that I know causes the most problems. I've experienced it myself. The areas where people struggle the most who are developing drivers is the harder braking zones, the slower corners with the more aggressive exits. So we're gonna look at the details that go into 
making sure that you can get around that corner with confidence and get on the power early. And with that said, let's take a look at what actually constitutes getting it right. So pretty straightforward, we're just gonna break in a straight line and drop the second. The turn in point is at the 50 meter, so break at 100, turn in at 50, little white line helps you out. We'll just sew that right down and we're gonna pause it on the apex. So the first thing you'll notice is there's actually no braking inputs and no throttle inputs. We're essentially coasting at this stage. All the braking has been done on a straight line to line us up for this apex, to coast around the corner and upshift the second. We wanna carry the speed so we have as much speed as possible that when we get on the second gear, we're carrying enough speed that we don't create too much torque when getting on the power. That's where people start spinning out. You'll probably find yourself spinning out quite a few times on this corner. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is, is as I've said, you've burnt off far too much speed, which means that you're getting on the throttle and you're having to apply too much power with the steering inputs. The second reason is you have started to turn in too early to the corner, created a very early apex, which means your steering inputs are gonna be very severe. And when you do apply the power, that in itself will cause you to spin out. What we wanna do is create as wide a line as possible, cut across the apex, carry the speed coasting, and get up to second gear. Now, all of that said, I still didn't get it perfect. And the reason I'm focusing on the chase cam is it gives me an opportunity to illustrate what perfect looks like or what better than what I've done looks like, even though what I've done is reasonably good. So you can see I've put an arrow straight through the center line of the car where it is now. I'm, I've missed the apex. You can clip a little bit of that curb. So we've got half a car's width to go. So we're gonna move that arrow inside to where we should be, but the line isn't great either. It could be better. So we're just gonna open that angle up a little bit better to give you a reference. So if you can visualize what that car should look like, that's gonna mean that having that later apex having that better angle in the car means you can get onto the power earlier, carry more speed and open up the steering inputs and power out of that corner. Let's have a little look at how that looks in real time. So you can see I'm immediately up to second and just applying the 50% the throttle until I get the confidence to open that steering lock in parallel to get an additional 50% for full throttle to power out. And let's look at that once again in full speed and listen for the throttle. At this stage, if you are enjoying the video or you've found anything so far helpful uh, in the details, I'd really appreciate if you wouldn't mind um, subscribing to the channel if you're new or hitting the like button or leaving a comment. If you find it's too detailed and it's too much, let me know that as well because I can put out the more refined brake marker only track guides. I do enjoy doing these, but they take a lot of time and a lot of effort. So just let me know what you like, what you enjoy. Give me that feedback and I can start making the content that you benefit best from. So we're up in the fifth gear and we're approaching our next braking zone. And you can see we're just getting on the brakes just before the 100 meter marker. And we're on the full brakes after 100 meters. And you can see that from all perspectives and all points of view that you can drive from. Again, a common theme, braking in a straight line. Just looking at that edge of that railing on the left hand side that's where you're going to start turning in. You're going to get yourself down the first gear for that rotation. Now, full transparency, we didn't quite hit the apex, but it wasn't bad. So we're going to get ourselves up to third gear. Now, this is where we're going to start getting on the power and get on the power early to get the best exit possible. And you can see there, up to 80% and then pushing out to 100. This curb on the left is an absolute bad. There's no other word for it. If you're on not fully on the throttle before you hit it and you're accelerating on the curb, it's going to send you into that wall on the right hand side. Get on the power early, get a late apex, get yourself lined up for the exit. There's a lot of time to be gained there. So we power on the way out, up to fourth, and we're just going to hold fourth here and get on the brakes just before that 50 meter marker. You can see that from all the different camera angles again. At this stage, we're gonna just drop the third and come off. You can see the actual uh, tire marks give us a reference. At the end of the curb, we're coming off and rotating in. Now this one's a real, real tricky corner. We're gonna drop at the second for the rotation and we're just gonna coast round this curb. We're just gonna hold it in 
and get a little bit of throttle in third gear, but we're holding it at like 75% until we're ready, then we're going up to 100%. Then we're far out. You can get a track limit if you go too early and go too wide on this one. But straight down to the end of the curb. And then that's where we're going to get onto the brakes now. So now we're on the brakes. Again, this corner on the left-hand side is very, very important to get a good exit. It's important your entry is right and it's late. So coasting in again. Third gear. Trail braking just for adjustment. Getting on the power to not to 100 to 90% and holding it for the traction. And then once we see where we're going once we see where we want the exit to that's when we commit to the hundred percent and push all the way out up into fourth on the curb you can get a track limit there so make sure you have your wheels positioned correctly otherwise you're going to pick up a track limit at the end of the lap but now we're in the home straight where we're getting ready for our last couple of corners up into fifth get on the brakes just before those barriers on the left hand side that's where I'm starting to apply the brakes. So again, same consistent theme, braking in a straight line. That's important. Braking in a straight line, getting all your speed burnt off in a straight line so you can coast in and carry the speed. So we're going to drop to third and we're just going to a little bit of trail braking to hit that curb. Once we hit the curb, on the full power. Now this is a lot of commitment here, especially at the end of a lap. This was actually very well done because I used, there was no more room for me there on the left hand side of that green curb to go. Otherwise I was risking another track limit. But I'm up to fourth and I'm looking for that brake marker just in front of those two little yellow spots ahead of me. And this is an interesting brake. It's a dab of the brakes, dab, right? Dab and drop shift. Drop into third, not on the brakes too much, not killing the speed. And now we're gonna aim for that yellow curb on the inside. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at that curb to see how much of it we can take. Because similar to turn one, that curb can cause a lot of destabilization. Now at this stage of the lap, if you know you're in a good lap, you're really not wanting to do too much to risk you, you getting a track limit penalty or throwing you too wide. So I'm taking a little bit off it. You can take a little bit more. But other than that, I've got a pretty good line. And I know from chasing the ghost, it's a pretty good exit. So I'm sitting at 75, 80%, then on to 100. Once I'm confident, and you can see I take all of that, you know, there really is no margin for error there. Up to fourth before the end of the curb, up to fifth, and bring it over the line. That's a 28.7. Like I said, we can do a 28.5. Unfortunately, we just couldn't hook it up. But this is the lap in its raw form. Hope you enjoy it. Like I said, get yourself a subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button and leave your feedback in the comments. I'd love to hear it. And stick around to the start of the next lap once this one is completed for some very ironic moments. Thank you. Bye-bye.